emerged the victor. In June 1926, he was appointed commander-in-chief of the Northern Expedition, the campaign to unite the country. A month later, the young army set out. Full of patriotic enthusiasm, they won victory after victory. In just six months, they defeated 34 warlords and they swept up to central China. All along the way, the people welcomed us. For example, they would boil water and cook sweet potatoes by the side of the road where our troops were passing. They would say, brothers, come and eat and drink. Help yourselves. The army was well disciplined then. And so the soldiers and the officers, they always paid for whatever they ate and drank. Everybody went. At the rallies, speakers talked about the cooperation between the nationalists and the communists. They called for the defeat of the northern warlords and the imperialists, and they asked peasants not to pay land rent and debts. It's like a good idea to fight exploitation and the northern warlords. Many in the army's propaganda teams were communists. They explained the goals of the northern expedition, and they called for the end of many deeply ingrained social customs. Wang Ping soon joined the communists. I didn't know what they were up to, communism or whatever, but I saw that they made trouble. They tried to destroy our religion, our family system, and our ethical structure. For instance, young people's respect for the old. My father told me that the biggest fault of communism was that it was inhuman. So what seemed to be cooperation between the nationalists and the communists during the northern expedition was actually only our temporary concession. So we wanted to purge the party, but it was a pretty dangerous thing to do. We could have been finished off. Both sides might move at the same time. The communists were all among us. The problem was how to do the purge. Zhang planned to purge the communists when his army reached Shanghai. Here, communist workers, led by Zhou Enlai, had formed armed guards and taken control of the city. They were completely unaware of Zhang's plan to break them and they eagerly waited for his army to arrive. Nationalist troops moved into Shanghai. Chang struck on April 12th, 1927. Chiang Kai-shek's army was in firm control of Shanghai. Communists and workers held a huge demonstration to protest the betrayal. There were about 100,000 workers there. Many were injured. It was raining that day. Bashan Road was a river of blood. I remember it was drizzling. When they arrested us, they beat us with rifle butts. Yes, rifle butts. Some of us were hit on the head and were bleeding. Even then, all we said was, good. That was how we showed our defiance. So they hit us and we said, good, good, and we grit our teeth. 
Alaska. Chang's purge spread around the country. Unions were closed. Communists and left-wing organizers were arrested. Thousands were executed. Only days after the purge in Shanghai, Zhang established a national government in Nanking. He now controlled China's economic heartland, and over the next few years, he expanded his control. The success of the Northern Expedition earned Zhang tremendous prestige, and he adopted the title Generalissimo. Zhang had made himself the heir to Sun Yat-sen. He strengthened this position by having Sun's body brought to the new capital in an epic journey. He married Sun Yat-sen's sister-in-law, Sung Mei Ling. She came from a wealthy Methodist family. She had gone to school in the United States, and her English was excellent. Her charm was a valuable asset to Jiang, for he was a difficult, aloof man who gained respect, but not affection. To many, especially in the cities, it seemed a new era was beginning. People were more open to the West than ever. Zhang's government began modernization programs. The modernization is the way we keep our ancient tradition of virtues, but we adopt Western technologies and Western modern social science in a way the broad to the poor. Specifically, I noticed the medicine, the building of new hospitals. It was a time of construction. Transportation and communications were modernized. The currency system began to be unified. Education was expanded. Chiang Kai-shek appointed Chen Li-fu a top advisor. I or Vast security organizations were set up. A top priority was to prevent renewed communist growth in the cities where remnants of the party had gone underground. Chen Zui worked for the security police. We knew they were communists by their speeches their posters, or the articles they wrote. Or if we searched their homes, we'd find communist papers. That was the correct way. But if we had doubts, we'd say, better to kill an innocent one by mistake rather than let a bad one go. After all, they were fighting the nationalists for power. In spite of the security police, the communists began to rebuild support in cities where working conditions were often brutal. In factories, child labor was common. In silk production, very young children worked plucking cocoons from boiling water. <laughs> 